Ribs and Helles in the beer garden. This combination with good with good people. So that's perfect. It's a great you can combination. Sit there forever. <laughs> yeah, you really can forever. Yeah, I got to I got to check out that beer garden. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hello and welcome to the Gourmet Brewing Podcast. This season we're learning from brewers about their delicious lagers and how they created them. I'm your host, Doug Piper. I'm a speaker, a Cicerone, and an international food and beverage judge. Today's featured guest is Tobias Solo, the head brow master of Wine Stefaner in Germany, and Scott Jennings, the master brewer at Sierra Nevada in the USA. Wine Stefaner has been brewing continuously for a thousand years. Sierra Nevada is one of the USA's largest craft breweries. Now, during our time together, we discuss whether ancient brewing techniques are still important with today's modern equipment and ingredients. It's a spirited discussion, but the conclusion really might surprise you. So let's join our discussion as Tobias helps me with the right way to pronounce the name of his brewery. Well, welcome Scott Jennings, brewmaster at Sierra Nevada. And Tobias Zolo, the Browmaster at Weinstefaner. This is just, we had so much fun back in February. I think that was February 10th. And we couldn't at the time get this beer. But it was a big part of our discussion. And I want to thank you both for your willingness to jump on again uh, and discuss it a little bit further so we could dive into this really intriguing topic that I, that I find a lot of people are nearly uh, religious about. And is decoction necessary? And I think it's just particularly apropos uh, that, to be as you're at a brewery that has primarily done de decoction all of its thousand years, and yet, Scott, you're the brewmaster at a brewery that I don't think even has the equi equipment to do decoction. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. So, Tobias, the first thing I want to ask you about is I am terrible about pronouncing things, may maybe the worst. So how is the right way to pronounce the name of your brewery? You did it pretty good. So you said Wine Stefan. So Wine Stefan. Wine Stefan, right. Well, why? Okay, so, so is it similar to the English word wine? Yes, you can, you can oh. say it like that, yeah. Okay, so I think so I'm guilty of saying Wine Stefan it's, with a V. It's meant Holy Stephen because it was the name of the church on the monastery of the brewery. Okay, so if I say Wine Stefan, I'm Wine pretty Stephan. close. Re re yeah, right. And Scott, how do we pronounce the name of your brewery? Well, that's pretty simple. It's just <laughs> Sierra Nevada. Uh, although you will hear people say Nevada. Uh, but uh, my own uh, personal opinion is that you would say Nevada. Nevada. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. What, what, what would Ken or Brian say? They would say Nevada. Nevada. Okay. Well, that, that I, I think a lot, a lot of that has to do with just, you know, where you're from. You know, like, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, Creek or Crick, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're on pronunciations... Uh, you know, I think it's real interesting to be is that this bottle has a different label in the U.S. Uh, than what it has in Germany. So how do you, how do Germans pronounce this style of beer? Uh, this is a, a, a lager beer, but we in Germany say it's a helles or a hell beer. So hell that's beer. why, yeah. We have, I, I can show you. So this is the, this are the labels, same beer, different labels for the German market. It's original Helles. And for the US market, it's original premium. Cause it, I think it wasn't, wasn't that common to call a beer hell because it's a different meaning in, in, in English, right? Hell, it's not, not a beer, it's something else. You want to go there? <laughs> you don't want to go so there. <laughs> so that's So why. in Germany, it's not a four letter in, word? No, no, in Germany, it's something like light or shiny. Yeah, very light. So, but li light, in color. Color, color light. light in color. Light in color. Light in color. Yeah. I had always yeah. heard blonde, but it's or, or not blonde. Really blonde. Yeah. 
<clears throat> but you don't say that in, in Germany. So that's more Belgium or, yeah. Well, while we're talking about that, so when you, when you think of brewing a Helles compared to maybe something like a German Pils, how would you contrast the two? What's the flavor profile, the difference you're kind of looking for, a German Pils versus a, a Hell or a Helles? Um, yeah, that's that's easy because a, a German Helles, a traditional one, is very on the malty side. <clears throat> so you you need to have the the golden color and uh, malty grainy um, aroma, and the Pilsner is is sh more hell, <laughs> so more more shiny or or straw straw color, and. Um, it's more on the hop side. So it's, of course, you have the multi character, but not uh, dominant. So it's more the hops are in the, the front side. So that's why there's also some differences, even in Germany, about a. So there's no German Pilsner style. So there's a North German Pilsner style and a South German Pilsner style. North Germany is where the typical for Pilsners over the centuries, I think. And they have very, very bitter ones, high in IBU, so 35 or 40, that's high for us. <laughs> and very on the bitter side. And uh, southern Germany, so Bavaria, for example, we have normally more wheat beers, so the, the, the heavy wise. And when we brew Pilsner, so it's a very, it's a small, small thing, a small share of our pr production. And so we just use, we sit, we are sitting middle in the Halle Tau, the largest top growing area in the world still, I think. And we use mainly very aromatic hops. And then we add it at the end of, of uh, the boiling or in the whirlpool. So we uh, focus more on the aroma. So it's, we have, when it comes to analytics, more or less the same IBUs, so 35 or, or something like that. But it's not that bitter because it's more on the aromatic side. So when you have a Pilsner in Germany, it's bitter or aromatic. And in the Helles, you just have slightly hop notes. So the malt is more in the, in the front. So, so the Hell or the Helles lager is malt forward versus the, Ge the German Pils being more hop forward. Yes. So either Scott or Tobias, do you have a favorite food or a favorite food recipe that goes well with Haggis, uh, Haggis, <laughs> Hellas lagers? Well, uh, I think one of my uh, uh, favorite memories, Tobias, you remember uh, the last time I visited you, we went to the beer garden at your brewery and we had uh some ribs that uh, you have at the beer garden there uh and and that was it was a beautiful day uh it was uh amazing food and gorgeous beers uh and uh maybe because of that reason uh i make that uh pairing association yes i can i, I remember very good because um this is if you asked me the question, I would say the same. It's best in, when you sit in the beer garden, when you have ribs, of course, ribs are perfect, but it also fits very good to just um, cold plates. Like it's very typical in Bavaria, just have a, a Brotzeit. We call it Brotzeit. So it's sausages and, and cheese, cream and pretzels. And this is the, the, the standard um, drink for that is Helles. But it's it's a style like uh, Hefeweiss, you can... Um, I think you can combine it to almost all food we have here. So that's why ribs and helles in the beer garden, this combination with good, with good people. So that's perfect. It's a great you can sit there forever. <laughs> yeah, you really can forever. Yeah, I got, to, I got to check out that beer garden. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. You 
Well, I think we're, okay, I'm getting thanks. thirsty, guys. Uh, Scott, I know you had your can yes. out. You might have already poured yours. No, I uh, didn't. It's not open, see? Oh, well, you had a full <laughs> glass of something. Uh, that's uh, that's my warm-up beer. Oh. <laughs> well, I hadn't had a warm-up beer yet, but what I would love to do is to pour this. And Tobias, if you wouldn't mind, would you kind of talk about uh, your original Hellas, its profile, its flavor, its colors, its brightness, and I'll try and capture that on the camera. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras to pour, and then you go ahead and start talking about it when you're ready. Okay, we start with our original Helles, original premium. So this is our traditional Helles lager beer. We are brewing since, I don't know, 30 years or longer. And we do it in a traditional decoction um, brewing, decoction mashing. And what is the benefit with decoction or with this, uh, for this um, beer? It's very, very golden in color. So it's not that light or shiny. It's, as I said, golden. It had a nice head with a, with a perfect foam, I think. So this is also one big advantage of decoction. And it's on a 100% um, malt, um, just a barley malt from Bavaria and a very nice malty flavor. And it's a single hop with uh, Perle here from the Hallertau. From, we selected from one, one uh, hop farmer. He is uh, growing that for us. We go there every year and select uh, the best batch and have a good relationship with them. And this is my main hop for the, for the lager beers. And that's why I use it just single in every step of the boiling. So the beginning, the middle, the end, even in the whirlpool, just to have a slightly nice um, hop aroma, but um, it should be more malty in taste, but it's also slightly hop character. So, so did I hear and you use the word the smoky first, yeah. character or did I misunderstand that? No, not smoky, no, no, no. It's, um, Hoppy. hoppy, slightly hoppy character. Okay. Sorry. All right. I just want to make sure I heard it right. And you need to enjoy yours. And it looks like you're pouring yours much better than mine. I think you have a bigger glass no, no, than I've got. You did good. <laughs> I also prefer to, uh, prefer to pour it on two times to always have a nice head. Well, that's a beautiful pour and a beautiful yeah. glass. I like that one better. So I, mine's a little yeah, this glass. This is a perfect glass. So this is. We can discuss one hour about the perfect glass to the to a beer and the different taste and different glasses, because this is very important for the for the flavor and for Hellas, I think this glass is best. Well, as you said, that's probably another show. <laughs> but I, I did want to switch in and look at the color, and the clarity. Uh, I mean, it is, there's a little humidity here in South Carolina, but it is brilliantly clear. Totally brilliantly yeah. clear. That's, that's the goal. And, and leaves a nice, starting to get a little lacing up there at the top. Mm -hmm. yeah, what Tobias, a, do you want to maybe, uh, uh, describe the filtration process that you use, uh, on, on the Hellas? Yeah, we start preparing that even in the in the storage cellar because we have um, horizontal tanks for four or five weeks at zero degrees Celsius, so ne nearly freezing, to let the the yeast settle down to the bottom and to balance the beer out. So what, what we're doing in the, in the brew house with the decoction to make it a little bit more edgy or more beer character, then in the storage cellar, we balance that out. So we have a very smooth aftertaste. And after this five weeks storage time, we go to filtration and we have a, a traditional Kieselgur filtration. So 
just the sh we, at the moment we have a we uh, have a shift uh, or how do you call it a shift filter is the right is that the right uh, name let's see is it a candle filter no, it's not a, a leaf candle. leaf it's filter the, the box with the oh cells. the the uh, yeah um, hor horizontal leaf filter okay if this is the right word yes so horizontal leaf filter yeah yeah what, what do you call it tobias um, Schichtenfilter. Oh, uh, say that one more sheet, time. Sheet, sheet filter. Yeah, so you have uh, pad, uh, filter pads in there, right? Oh. Like uh, yeah, more cellulose or less, yeah. pads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like a giant coffee filter with and just layers and layers and layers? Yeah, 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 that's a good description. Yeah. It's me. More or less. <laughs> yeah. Coffee filter works. <laughs> Yeah, this this is the system if you want. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, and we we add also Kieselgeur because that absorbs the the yeasts and the, and the proteins and everything, and then we we do it with um, very gentle with the pressure to um, have so because filtration is always a problem more or less because it makes from a brewer's point of view makes the beer worse you bring out a lot of aromas and everything because yeast has aromas you bring it out you lose aroma unfortunately also some of the hop, hoppy characters i think this is one of the most reasons why a lot of craft brewers don't filter their their beer because you lose a lot of aromas unfortunately yeah. but you gain you gain a nice shiny um shiny beer so this is when it's crystal clear so this is in this you sit in the beer garden the sun shines on on the glass you have you have the sun in your hand and this is great the sun in your hand i like that <laughs> yeah i wouldn't say it, it makes the beer worse uh it, but it does change the beer and uh yeah. i mean whereas in, in the, you yeah know what I, I do mean. know what you mean whereas and i was going to say that if you, if, you, if you taste it in the, in the storage yeah, yeah, tank, yeah. and then you taste it after right. filtration. I'm, I'm with you on that, but that's that's the brewer's perspective. That's why uh, every brewer you talk yeah. to says, oh, the best beer is, is Vickle beer. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> or Hippolyte. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> it, it's just hard to get that in a package. Uh, that's true. That's true. It's also yeah. not stable in the package yeah. after a long time. Yeah. Well, that's that's one reason. I want to open the one we've been waiting beer. to open uh, all together because uh, I think we tried to do this in January. We went ahead in February and I think we finally got beers all together all at once. So this is the uh, the grand moment. Let's do the pour. And Tobias, could I get you to talk about it while I pour it? Yes, of course. So this is our second Hellas. So it's our new Hellas, we call it here. Um, just to have a difference, original or new Hellas. And um, this is uh, brewed with the infusion mash. And it's lower in ABV. So this is at 4.8. The original is with 5.1. It sounds not that big step, but it is. If you drink two or three, then you will definitely recognize a, a big difference. It's more lighter or shinier in color because of infusion. Um, so it's not that golden like the original. It's more in the very light, raw character or, or color. And it also has a nice foam, even if it's infusion. So infusion is not, is so as I said, decoction is better for foam. But if you do some rests, then you can also, or have a good malt, then you can also have a good, um, good foam on that. And what was what was one point? So we want to make it more, more slim. So not in taste, but in in, in body. So very, how to say, very very crisp, refreshing beer. So you can have it for breakfast or at the beach, um, just as a refreshing. So it's not a typical one for the for the evening for the barbecue. Then you change to the to the original or to a heavy vice. But as I said, in the morning or at the beach when it's hot, 
then it's very crisp and refreshing. And that was the, the goal for that beer. Well, I don't know that that was my best pour, uh, but that, that wasn't the beer's fault. <laughs> but we'll keep working on it. And to me, it looks just as clear. I, I don't... Uh, sh should it be a little less clear? Oh, I would... No, no, it's, it's uh, both filtered, and there should be 100% clear. Not not cloudy or hazy or any anything else. Well, it it is beautifully clear. I, I can't. I've got to. I got to give this a try. Cheers, gentlemen. We've been waiting uh, quite a few months to do this together. Cheers. Cheers. I think I'm gonna get a little foam stash out of this. Mmm. Mm. <clears throat> and we use different hops. As I said in the original, we have 100% Perle, and in this one we have um, we have Perle just for the for the um, start of the boiling. Then in the middle of the boiling we have uh, Halatawa Select, and at the end of boiling we have Halatawa Saphir. And personally, this is I think this is my favorite hop is Saphir, because it's such a gentle aroma. It's not bittering. But it has a really great yeah. aroma, and you can use it for um, most of my colleagues in other breweries use that use it for a for a for a bock hella bock or for pilsners, and they use uh, huge amounts of that for the nice a nice taste or aroma of the hop. And I said I wanted to. I think uh, I can use it in a in a hellas, and I tried it, and used a little less because it should be a Hellas and not a Pilsner. But I think it makes it very, I always describe it as it, it makes it very smooth in the, in the mouth. So it's very, very smooth and, and it runs down without any mm -hmm. problem. So it's, you, you want to drink another sip and another sip and another sip because it's so smooth and just flowing. And that was, was the point for for the style, because this is a style you have to, you need to drink. So drinkability, I think, is here very, very important. Yes. Especially Saphir for Saphir is, is a, 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 a nice hop, I agree. Um, I, I tend to get a little bit of citrus uh, uh, from it um, when, you, when you use it heavily. But even when you don't use it heavily, I think it really does uh, contribute to a sense of uh, refreshment. Um, in in a beer, mm. um, it's, it's a nice hop. So Scott, can we get those same hops in the U.S.? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and we we use uh, we use them also uh, in a couple of beers. Okay, and and um, so are they domestically grown? Not that I know of. Um, I I could be wrong about that, but uh, I'm I'm really um, uh, um, pretty sure that they're they're all uh, European sourced um, okay. certainly the the saphir and the uh, perle or pearl sometimes people call it um, are uh, that we use are, are german sourced well to be as i think we've talked about the hops but but you've spent maybe as much or more time on the mashing and can you talk about i guess why or how you changed or how you came to the conclusion uh, to not use the traditional match, mashing approach of uh, Vine Stefaner. Yeah, as I said, my goal was to have a difference between the two Hellas, of course, and um, to have it when you want to have a beer with a high drinkability and for breakfast, for example, then you need to have a, a, a slimmer body or another, not that broad, if you know what I mean. So that's why I want to have it very slim and gentle and and low in ABV. So 4.8 is lower than 5. So this is low from, from a brewer's point of view, I think. And that's why I also, that's why I selected the hops to uh, make something the other side. I don't want to have it too slim or too watery. So don't get me wrong, it's not, not, not slim at all or watery. So it's just slimmer compared to our original. 
And I think if we do it with the decoction, then you get more more edgier beer than you have it in the infusion. That's why I try to do it in infusion to get it very very clear straight. Yeah, uh, I uh, I want to ask you about that, Tobias, because um, in this beer I, I really get a very full and nice malt flavor. Um, it, it's very mm. much a, a clean malt flavor, uh, rich even, um, you know, just the right amount of sweetness so that the beer feels like like something, you know. But even though it has a low ABV, yeah. it still has, you know, uh, substance. But uh, but yeah. it, if That's you were to, yeah. um, and if you compare it to the, uh, the original, the grain character is different. Uh, you still have a, a, a full malt character and flavor, but the quality of that character is different. To me, it seems yeah. like in the original, it's, it's a little bit more grainy in the sense of, uh, oh, with, with just a, t- a touch, just a hint of uh, astringency. Whereas in this one, mm-hmm. it's more grainy in the sense of of uh, a, a, a bread, like a sweet bread. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Does that does that make any sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I agree. So, it's malt is is in, in focus, multi character of uh, of a Hellas, as I said, but there should be a difference. So, the Hellas is more. The new Hellas is more, or compared to the original, it's, it's not that malty or bread-like. It's more grainy, yeah. as you said. And the original, this is more, yeah, you know you know, you have a beer now. A, a traditional, good German Hellas. Uh, so, uh, Doug, I think oh. in the questions that um, you will get into here in a little while, this, this will probably be part of that. But I, I figured since we're talking about it, let's just jump right into it. And I want to ask, Tobias, in the, the new um, um, Hellas versus the original, is the grain uh, percentages the same or did you change something? I know you might use a little less in the new one because the ABV is a little lower. But uh, are you using the yeah. same malts at, at the same percentages, or did yes. you change something? No, indeed, we use the same because we use 100% um, barley pilsner type. So no mixture or some dark or crystal or I don't know or sour malt. So we just use 100% pilsner no barley Munich malt, malt from Bavaria. Uh, no crystal malt, no, no, no nothing. No. Yeah. no, no, nothing. We use sour good for for the, but we discussed that a lot in yeah, the last we did, season. Yeah, we did. Yeah, but um, this is the point when we want to lower the pH or or, or something like that. But we use one hundred percent pilsner barley malt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't use any Munich malt because I don't want to have a dark color. The opposite. I want to have a lighter color. That's why I do it in infusion to have it a little slightly lighter than. The original premium. Mm-hmm. So, to be us from a brewer point of view, what what is it about infusion? What profile characteristics does infusion either allow or create versus the flavor profiles from decoction? Yeah, and in infusion. I think this is the the clearest way to brew beer. In decoction, you can you can change the character more. You can make it more edgier or more foamy or more I don't know more on the malty side. If you if you cook it too long, then it makes it's too too more um, bread like as as um, Scott said. But yeah, that's the advantage of a decoction mash. So infusion, I think, is the the standard, or the yeah. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, um, just in terms of breweries around the world, I, I would say the majority are not doing a decoction uh, for mm. a lot of reasons, including um, uh, 
energy use, uh, including time, uh, which is also very expensive in the brewery. Uh, you know, you can um, you can complete a, an infusion mashing regardless of the size of the batch in in an hour, or maybe maybe even mm. less, uh, which which has a huge advantage. Um, but um, yeah, I mean. I think this is a fascinating pair, uh, really, because from my point of view, um, the differences between decoction and infusion in terms of the way they translate into the flavor of the beer, uh, historically, we, we always discuss that as being very, very big differences, you know, almost almost night and day differences. But in reality, they're, they are subtle differences. Uh, that that allow you to to play around within within your styles uh, that you're making. Um, I don't know. Would you agree, Tobias? Yeah, it's. Uh, I agree. Yeah, and as you said, it's a historical point of view because we hadn't that mold quality in former times than we had have now. So that's why, if you just want to break it down to technology or techniques, so. There's no need for decoction anywhere in the world because you have very high mold quality. You don't need it. In former times, you did decoction because the mold wasn't that that good in, from the from the molteries, uh, or even from the the mold sorts you you had. Um, but nowadays, with the with the new sorts and with the new technology or experience in the mold mold houses, they they can bring you mold where you don't need that decoction. In former times, you need it. Just uh, what was what is decoction? You have a mash, and then you take a part of that mash, bring it to another from the from the mash uh, tun to the mash kettle. Then you heat it up until it cooks. Then you cook it for ten minutes more or less, and then you bring it back to the mash tun to. Uh, you have to calculate it, how much you, you bring away and heat up to come back to the next um, temperature rest you want. So then you have um, the next rest together in the, in, the, in the hole of the whole mesh in the mesh tun. And then you do another part, bring it to the mesh kettle, cook it up. So this and, and then bring it back to the next rest step. Why, why was it necessary in former times? Because it didn't. You had a very bad um, extract gain because the starch didn't broke out just by enzymes so of, of the mold enzymes. So that's why you need to break it out um, mechanically by cooking. So you can imagine it's like um, you see it better in corn. If you make popcorns, when you heat up a corn, then it pops out of the the corn. The starch pops out. In, in corn, you can see it very good, and it's more or less the same in a in a in a wheat or yeah. in a barley. So you're it's so 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 tiny you don't see it like a real popcorn, but it's the same same mechanic, and that's why you have the the, the starch in the mash and the enzymes can cut it down to the to the malt sugar, and that's now now the this is done in the in the maltery to bring out the starch or make it more soluble than in the in the mesh and that's why now you don't there's no big need for a for a decoction but it was in former times and why are we doing this next question i think because yeah as scott said time is a point of course but um we want to give the beer time so we're not a beer factory we're a brewery so we want to do it on a traditional way and a traditional side, and it makes a different taste mm -hmm. if you cook part yeah. of it. It makes a, a, a darker golden color. It makes it more edgy, more, more malty, and brings a m much more better foam if you do it like that because you start with a lower temperature and cook it, and, and this brings a better foam, I think. Um, and it's it's our taste, our wine Stefan taste, and that's we have success with that. So why change it just to sell a little more? Maybe. Yeah. 
I'm yeah. convinced we don't sell more in the future if the people just get any lager and not the taste they expect from Wine Stefan. Yeah, uh, and, and that's it exactly. We talked about this a lot last time too. And a lot of the listeners, um, you know, ask the questions, as you said, Doug, repeatedly, you know, rephrased in, you know, innumerable ways. You know, why should you do it? When should you do it? I think uh, the general understanding of how to do it is, is maybe not the question, but the why and the when. And uh, when you want to replicate a, uh, you know, very traditional, uh, you know, style that was always made long ago when the style was born in definition using a decoction technique, then if you want to replicate that flavor, you have to replicate that technique. Uh, you can get close by adding some melanoidin malt or uh, doing uh, some other things, but it's it's not quite the same, uh, right? Mm. But if, if, if you're not mm-hmm. so uh, set on replicating the flavor profile of a traditional style or the classical example of some traditional style, and you want to experiment with that, you can still, as this beer I think really demonstrates, you can, you can make a beer with a very full, very rich malt flavor without doing a decoction. Uh, And when, Mm. uh, for all the listeners, when you want to really understand what the flavor differences are between doing essentially the same beer with two different techniques, then Get this pairing that we have here today and try it for yourself. Are there differences? Yeah, there are. That, that, that's a good point. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way to experience it. You can do a um, um, record like this one and, and talk about for the for the beer geeks, I think, for the brewers um, um, from the listeners. But you can also just, um, I think this is um, more eye-opener just to taste it side by side see the difference and see what do you like or you prefer because it's always at the end of the day it's a it's a question of taste what do you personally prefer so we don't want to say this is better or not so because it's not true you have to say what is better for you and you can you can find it that's a big advantage that you now we have a big range of everything of classical styles like we do or the experimental styles i call it like that like uh, scott is doing and i think that's cool so you can listen to a podcast like that for, um, or do how do you call it, video cast? Yeah, or vi- video like podcast to, to learn more. Or that's why I said podcast because we have um, since the Corona time we have a podcast of Wine Stefan Brewery. So maybe maybe you can listen to that. So we talk a lot also with the university or other techniques or just inside of the breweries. So it's um, what's the name? Thousand years of beer. It's. You can find it everywhere. So maybe if you're more interested in Wine Stefan, for example. So, so Tobias, is there one style, or maybe Scott, you might have the answer too, where you really, to get the profile you want, and I'm not talking about a particular beer, I'm talking about a particular style. Is there one style up the, out there, maybe more than one, where decoction's really necessary to, to create that style? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Very good question. I can think of a couple of things to say to that. Um, I I guess I'll start with in our own experience. Uh, maybe some of uh, some of you might remember we did a, a Bavarian style Hefeweizen. We called that Kellerweiss. And uh, in this beer, um, which which by the way, um, personally, I felt it was. Uh, pretty true to type i think it it really did uh, capture you know the 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 essence of, of what is uh, a bavarian hefeweizen uh you know i don't That's think right, it's yeah. comparable to yours tobias mm-hmm. however uh, we were pretty proud of that <laughs> uh, but that beer no 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 god i i agree completely so when i you remember when i was over in the in your brewery mills river and you you let me try the color wise and i said no it wasn't taproom we, we tried it and i said 
uh, okay, this is a Sierra Nevada glass, but uh, this is not your beer, right? <laughs> this is a Bavarian. This is a Bavarian vice. No, 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 really, we brewed it here. And I said, okay, so maximum respect. It's very, very close to a Bavarian um, style. So I even would have said it is a Bavarian beer. So, yeah. And you did it in decoction. No, we didn't. Or It, wa it was infusion. Uh, originally, that was okay. an infusion beer. And so, um, long story short, uh, and, and thank you, by the way, for the kind words. You, you overly uh, compliment the beer for sure. But anyway, um, originally we did uh, make that with uh, you know um, very traditional ingredients all uh, uh, you know German hops um, you know um, but we did an infusion um, and uh, it was fairly typical to the timings and temperatures that we would do for you know even beers all the way uh, back to pale ale where you know total mashing time is uh, I don't know an hour maybe a little bit more with the final heat up right. but uh, But that's about it. We hold a um, uh, uh, one temperature for the whole time, and then we mash out to uh, 172 um, F, which is what is that, Tobias? Let me check it real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> that is um, 77 for the final ma mashing out. Yeah, that's typical. That's yeah. typical. And so yeah, then uh, typical. Uh, that beer, sadly, uh, was discontinued um, for national distribution, but we still make it uh, for our our own pubs uh, on draft, on draft yeah. only. Good position. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and perfect. we... I think uh, Hefeweiss is even better for, on, yeah, on draft. Yeah, yeah, and we still do open ferment or Makes open more, fermentation, more which is important for the character yeah, in, in that particular style. Yeah. But lately, but getting back to the whole point here, lately when I've been making it in our um, small brewery for the tap room, I have been doing a decoction with that. Because uh, originally, mm -hmm. uh, in the design phase of that, that beer, years and years ago, we wanted to do that because it would be more traditional to the style as it would be done in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. But in our brewery, as you mentioned at the top of the show here, Doug, we don't have the ability to do that. We don't have the equipment to do that in the, in the main brew house. Uh, and so, even in the small brew house, I... I, I don't really have the way to do it properly. So we sort of, you know, kind of make a decoction. <laughs> but uh, but I, I'm, I'm doing that lately for what we have in the tap room because the flavor is a little bit different, just a little bit different. Um, we're able to uh, yeah, just get a little bit more clove uh, character. Uh, in that way, mm -hmm. and we're also a little bit um, improved in foam, uh, and just overall complexity of the beer is just a little bit different. Uh, and what mm -hmm. I said earlier in terms of uh, you know nuance, that really is what it is. It's a nuance difference. Um, so when you would have them mm -hmm. side by side, if you were uh, you know if you were at a pub. And you had just casually, you know, with friends having a couple of beers and you had, if you had the ability to have one and then have the other version right after each other, you may, you may not notice. But if you were um, in a controlled environment, really like evaluating the one and then switching and evaluating the other, you would know that there was a difference. Um, so at this point, you know, why am I kind of going back to decoction on that particular beer it's really uh just for fun and just for the the sake of honoring the tradition uh not necessarily to improve the beer because as i said the difference is very small uh but um it's it's really sort of uh fun uh to do it that way well, you know i'm not a brewer but Thank i do try a little words. bit at home but the one that comes to my mind is a doppelbach Can you do a Doppelbach with infusion mashing? A, a good Doppelbach. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> true, true to profile. Uh, it, it's it's. Um, thank you for that question, Doug. 
Um, I was I was also happy for the question is there a style which uh, which is perfect for for the caption and Scott said the exactly the same what I prepared in my in my mind because the best <laughs> the best thing is for sure a Hefeweiz and I think it's it's great that you want to uh, you did it to honor the tradition of the traditional German or Bavarian Hefeweiz but indeed there's some I think more advantages with a wheat beer because you have wheat and not only barley and we start very very low in temperature so it's i don't have a calculator for for that we have 40 45 celsius yeah that is um 113 degrees and that is the ideal temperature if i'm not mistaken for ferulic acid production it is right and then you end up in the in the glove character, but you, it's also very good for for your proteins of the wheat, and for the the end of the day for the haziness of the beer, and for a stable haziness. So if you do it in that point, so you get a stable haziness and a very very good foam, a long lasting foam. You can see the lacing in the glass. You can see every sip in, in the glass. So that's perfect. So also, if you see it here in the in the Hellas. But it's even more in the in the wheat beer, and that's why we do it. That cold mashing in, and do a triple decoction, so three times. Bring it to the kettle, boil it, bring it back. To get out more of the of the of the proteins and for the foam and for the yeah. Each so time you're doing that decoction, Tobias, that that is for the purpose of when you bring it back to raise the temperature of the main mm. mash up to the next step yeah, and to go like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And f- especially for us, we are exporting a lot of beers or, or the most of our beers we are exporting. So we have a share of 70%, which goes to, to export market uh, or even higher. And biggest export market, of course, is, is the uh, United States. And when it's eight weeks on the on the ocean, I want to preserve the same quality than we have it here in Germany. So the same haziness, the same foam, the same taste. And that's why it, it, that helps a lot if you do it. The decoction. In, in decoction for that. Yeah. And Doug, to come to you, back to your question about the, the double block in the infusion system. Um, it's a difference if you do um, a lager double block or a wheat double bock so for a wheat i will always go for a for a decoction always for the same things as i said right now because of the wheat so in germany at least in germany we have to um, according to the purity law we we need to use at least 50 percent of the grist is wheat um, that's why we need to mash different than lagers if you have a, a, a double bock a lager doppelbock like our Corbinian, for example, the, the dark one. So then you can you can do it in infusion. I think you can do it in infusion because we don't do it, of course. We do it in decoction as we do all our beers except the new Hellas because you get a fuller body, I think. I'm, I'm convinced you get a fuller body for that. But it would be possible to do it. When it, for example, comes to an to a, a heller bock, yeah, <laughs> double bock hell, so a light version of that. Then I can imagine to do it in infusion to get a very slim character or a slim in, in the point of you don't get it when you drink it that it's that high in ABV. So you just can drink it as a hellas, and after the second one, you get a bump on your head. And he said, okay, right, wow. Yeah, yeah. So then I think it would help the style to have it uh, an infusion to don't recognize the alcohol or the, uh, at the yeah. first time. And underlay it with a lot of hops. So I would do a lot of hops in a, in a heller bock, um, double bock hell. And then you have a very, very crisp beer with a, with a full body and with a great taste. Yeah, yeah. So... I have that in mind to do that in the future one day. At the moment, we don't yeah. do it, unfortunately. We had it in former times, 
but maybe we do it in the future. Yeah, someday. we. Uh, it's it's funny. I think once again we're in complete agreement. Uh, Tobias, um, actually, the this next week, um, probably Monday, uh, Doug, if you're up in the area, uh, we'll have a a Weizenbach uh, that we'll put on tap uh, that I made with a decoction, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's tasting really really good. Um, we recently had an example of doing a, uh, a Doppelbach um, with a decoction, and the result was that it might be even uh, a little overly malty, um, is some of the comments that I've heard. Uh, and and I, uh, I don't have a lot of experience in that, so I want to ask you, Tobias, but um, the, the idea was that... Um, the reason could be uh, when you have um, a high gravity beer, you know, uh, as you would with a Bach, maybe the original gravity is, oh, I don't know, um, what, 17, 18 Plato or something like that. So you're using a lot of malt. And because you're using so much more malt than you would, um, you know, in, in a Hellas or, um, you know, something, a lower gravity beer. Already, you're going to get plenty of malt character, even without doing a decoction. So you can instead maybe do a step mash, uh, and not an actual decoction mash, and still get a pretty good yeah. traditional um, full character result. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, but um, not not but just a question. When people say it's more on the malty side. How do they mean that? Do they compare to to your other beers and expect, of course, from Sierra Nevada, you expect a lot of hops. So that's why they think it's too malty because they expect more hops. When they, for example, would would have a Vitus from Wein Stefan, the Weizenbock, there is there is very very small twelve or fourteen IBUs. So that's normal for, for a German style wheat bock. Um, and the people know that and expect more banana flavors and multi flavors of the for Easter's, the banana. Um, but I think when you have a Sierra Nevada bock, they expect, I would also expect more hops. <laughs> yeah. Because it's. Yeah. Well, in this Nevada case, I think um, uh, <laughs> this, this is a, an internal discussion among brewers. And so uh, as. Uh, a discussion among brewers, we're also keeping in mind the analysis or the analytics of the beer. And so when you have, mm. uh, you know, a similar gravity beer with a similar ABV and a similar ending gravity, and uh, when you're, you know, as a brewer, you sort of get trained uh, just by virtue of experience to, uh, you know, um, y you can uh, sort of, detect, if you will, um, the ending gravity mm. of a beer. And then in your mind, you're evaluating at that point how, how sweet it is and how much body it has and what's the malt character uh, in relationship mm. to what the analytical value happens to be. And so I think the experience uh, in terms of what we're, the example we were talking about is uh, that, uh, you know, for, for a, a strong beer with a high finishing gravity, the, uh, the sweetness and the, the balance between the sweetness and the malt character can be really different uh, from an infusion yeah. to a decoction, even yeah. if the numbers yeah. don't the change higher. at all. The numbers are identical, but the mm -hmm. perception can be quite different. Yeah, the, the, the higher the final attenuation, the less sweetness and less malty taste i think so it's higher drinkability so also you don't get the alcohol mm -hmm. that fast if you have a very high attenuation yeah well i guess uh, back to the question doug uh, long story short i think on a high gravity beer uh, i think you can get a, a, a regardless of the style perhaps with the exception of weizenbach uh, i think you can get a, a very uh, uh, a, a very good result with an infusion uh, type approach. So is there ever a reason to use decoction 
facades of Weizenbach. Uh, unless, to go back, to, let's eliminate Tobias's comment where he said, the profile that your customers are used to, that's a reason to continue. But I'm speaking of from a style point of view, can you replicate most of the styles, if not all the styles out there with Infusion besides a Weizenbach? Well, I think we, um, as we've discussed already, Doug, uh, I mean, the short answer is yeah, um, you know, but um, like like so many things in, in, in the brewing world, as is every time we talk, Doug, uh, and uh, with almost every question that comes up, the answer is it depends. <laughs> uh, it really yeah. depends. Uh, you know, what are you going for? Uh, as we discussed already, when you want to replicate, uh, you know, the, the very traditional uh, example of the style as it was uh, defined, you know, way back when, uh, you may want to use a decoction. And in that, that case, the question that you answer, is there ever a reason to use it? Well, there's one. Uh, but from a, you know, a practical point of view, you can get really dang close regardless of the style without doing that. Uh, and that's just a choice that, that brewers should make um, based on their own equipment and, and what their goals are. Davies, did you have a comment on that? I totally agree with Scott. <laughs> what? Um, it's what, as, as he said, what's, what's your approach if you want to do it in the, very close to original style, then you need to replicate original style. If you want to do it very high drinkable and slim in body, so you don't need a decoction. If you want to have a broader mouth feel or more sweetness, then decoction could help. But uh, with the molds nowadays and with the techniques nowadays uh, and with the, with the knowledge we have now, uh, more than in former days so I, I know it because i'm very close to the university and they and a lot of people say what what should what can you research on beer everything is everything is said well, no that's not true they find a lot of things every day and they're doing a lot of researches and and a lot of new techniques and technology and it's so amazing what you can find now and learn now and and if you know how you can do it with every way, every beer, if you really know how to. And that's the very cool point of our of our job. So, but it's always the idea of the brewer. What what do you want to have, uh, or what the people expect from a brewery or from you as a brewer? So, that's why we stick on the concoction for our original because we are convinced we have the best foam with that. We also compare it to competitors and we are, when it comes to foam, we win always. Um, that's, that's great. <laughs> I love that because especially in Germany, it's very important to have a, have a nice head on the, on the head and see the lacing and the glass. And, and I think, I also think it's, we have a high final attenuation in, in both beers, but we have it more sweet now with the decoction system and then, as I said, it's a beer for the for the evening, and the the Helles is a beer for the whole day. It's for sitting on the beach, just want to have a refreshing beer without any edges, but a good good nice taste. Then I think our new Helles from the can is perfect. Well, it's it's speaking in that I wanted to show uh, just kind of a beauty shot of what your delicious beers look like. Uh, just stunningly uh, delicious and pretty beers. Uh, this has been so much fun. I, I think we can switch over to our questions. If if you're still game to be us, I know it's six hours ahead where you are, and you had to work late at the brewery. So are you good to go through at least some of these questions? Yeah, of course. All right. I have, I have still a beer. Well, so. let's switch over to the questions. Uh, 